So you've gone out and had a successful hunt, and now you want to get the most for your time and effort. Well, on this episode of From What I Gather, I've got you covered. I'm making this delicious smoked venison kielbasa that everyone's going to love. So let's get started. I have my meat all weighed up, but before I start to grind it, I want to get my spice blend ready to go. That way, I can add it in as I'm grinding the meat, and it'll make it all that much easier to get a nice, even distribution of those spices. So for 10 pounds of meat, I'm going to begin with 91 grams, or roughly 5 tablespoons of plain salt. So to that, I'm going to add in... 10 grams of cure, or roughly two teaspoons. And that is pink curing salt number one, not curing salt number two, and not Himalayan pink salt. Those aren't gonna do anything for you. Now the salt and the cure are really the essentials when you're making sausage. Once you've got your salt, cure, and meat ratio right, all the other herbs and spices and flavorings you want to put in here are optional. And you can get really creative and create something truly unique. So, have fun with your sausage. So to my salt and cure, I'm going to add in one tablespoon of white sugar. I have one tablespoon of coarse ground black pepper. I've got one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. This is one teaspoon of ground marjoram. And you don't always find the mustard seeds in here, but I really like them. So I've got a quarter cup of dried mustard seeds. I just like the kind of pop you get when you bite into one of those, and it gives you a little tiny, tiny hint of that horseradish bite. Now, I'm going to add in two cups of non-fat powdered milk. And that's going to help work as a binder, and it's also going to help this sausage retain moisture throughout the smoking process. Oh, now I'll just cover this up and give it a real good shake to blend everything thoroughly. I like this sausage to be roughly 30% fat. So for this 10 pound batch, I've got six and a half pounds of my lean venison, to which I'm gonna add in three and a half pounds of this fatty, fatty pork belly. Now, all of my meat here is partially frozen, and that's gonna help it go through my grinder and have that grinder slice the meat rather than kinda smush it. And that's really gonna help with the texture of the grind. So I'm going to go to work trimming this a little bit and cutting it into small enough chunks for my grinder and then we'll get to grinding it. Now my grinder bits are all nice and cold and they've been hanging out in the freezer for a little bit. And I'm going to run about two thirds of the meat through this one eighth inch plate. And then the other third I'm going to run through the quarter inch plate to create some kind of meatier chunks and a real nice texture of this sausage. And I'm just going to eyeball that. No need to be precise. I'm fixing to mix the heck out of this. So I'm gonna glove up with cotton liners and rubber gloves over the top of that because this stuff is really, really cold as it should be. So I'm gonna add in a couple of cups of ice, ice cold water to help me mix this and get everything blended together. And now we're just gonna get in there and really, I'm gonna mix the heck out of this for a good five minutes until so everything is really blended together and it'll actually start to get a little stickier and get a little shaggy looking 
And that's when I know it's going to be ready for stuffing into the cases. Oh, it already smells great. <laughs> See what I mean? Kind of. It's already getting that shaggy kind of look. You feel it, and it's going to get tacky. And that's really going to help it to bind with the casing. Now I've got everything mixed together really well, and something you always want to do is get you a little bit of that and make you a little silver dollar size patty, and you're going to fry that thing up and you're going to taste your sausage before you put it in the casings. That way you'll be able to adjust the saltiness or the sweetness or the spiciness or anything you need to do before it's too late. Yeah, let's give that a taste. Mmm, that's good, so what you're looking for, of course, something you like the flavor of, and this one is about as salty as your breakfast sausage. It's very good. It's going to make some great kielbasa. I'm using natural hog casings today for that good snap, and these do come dried and packed in salt, so you want to take these out and rinse them, then soak them in cold water overnight before making your sausage, so a little planning ahead for these guys. I got my stuffer, and in case I get any air bubbles caught in the sausage while I'm cranking it out, I got this little corn pop to stab him. Watch out, because he's a bad dude. Hey. Now I'm going to load up the stuffer by getting a big ball of that sausage mix, kind of packing it together as good as I can. The point of this is just to try to smooth it out and get as much air out of there as possible. Then I like to give it a little toss down into the bottom of there and then pack it in and just get another one and keep going until we get that guy filled up to the top now I've got my rehydrated casings here after these have soaked overnight I take them out and I'll snip the very end of that just to make it a nice and even then I'll open it up just like I'm gonna do to put on the sausage stuffing horn but I put that open end over my faucet and run just a little bit of water down and all the way through there and that'll help you work out any kinks that you might have in your casing now we get that end opened up and just slide her on there Putting a little water on the horn there helps it go on there nice and easy. There we go. And I'll leave a little tag end on there for tying this off. I'll just crank this real slow to get the sausage to come out to the tip of the horn there. It's going to push a little air here and I don't want that in there so just pull that off the end. Then once the sausage starts coming out, I'll hold that just for a moment to get it to start to fill. Then I let go, and I'll just lightly keep that from flying off of the horn there. I'm not really squeezing it though, I'm just keeping that thing from getting away from me. Now I get to decide how long I want these sausages to be. I'm actually going to make a gap between there so we can have some casing here to tie them off with you could use string but I just go ahead and use the casing to tie them now we'll just snip that first one off of there and I'll use that as sort of a gauge so I can get them all kind of close to the same length now I'll just take those two loose ends tie them together a few times that a little tug to make sure it's nice and secure and doesn't slip at all. Now we're ready to hang that up. Ooh, wait, isn't that pretty? Wow. <laughs> now I've got my sausages all stuffed and I'm gonna leave them out here in the refrigerator to hang overnight. That's gonna give the cure some time to get in there and work its magic on any bacteria that might be in there and also get a head start on drying out these casings. 
Of course, I know that not everybody's got a little refrigerator they can dedicate to hanging sausages, and quite frankly, normally I have so much stuff in here that I can't do it either. So what I would normally do is mix up the sausage mix with the spice and the salt and the cure, and then put that into the refrigerator overnight to let the cure work, and then stuff the sausages up in the morning. But doing it this way, it gives me a little head start and it'll save me some time in the morning. That overnight hang in the refrigerator has given me a good head start on drying out my casings. And now I brought them inside for a room temperature hang to continue conditioning the casings. I want to get the casings nice and dry before I put them out into the smoke. And that's going to help the sausage take on the smoke flavor and develop that really nice red color. Now I'm going to leave mine hanging here for about an hour, but if you've just stuffed the sausages and they're still really damp, that could take a little longer, and you might want to put a fan on these to help speed things along. Now the final portion of the conditioning stage is to let these guys hang out in a warm smoker. I'm talking between 100 and 120 degrees with no smoke going. I'm going to leave them out here for about an hour just to finish off really drying those casings. I smoke my sausages in three stages. The first stage that we're just finishing up is the conditioning stage, and that's where we're just preparing the sausage to take on the smoke. Stage two is the smoking stage. Here I'll bump the heat up to 150 degrees, start the smoke, and put some water down in the water pan. Now this is the stage where we get to decide how smoky and dry we want the sausage to be. I want these to be a fairly smoky but pretty moist sausage because I'm going to be reheating them later when I serve them. So I'm going to smoke these for 4 hours. You can smoke these from anywhere from 2 to 6 hours depending on how you like your sausage. So it's a fun thing to play around with as you're learning this craft. Now at the start of the smoking phase, I'm going to go ahead and slide in a temperature probe down into one of the meteor guys here so I can monitor the temperature as they go. So now you got a lot of time on your hands while these are smoking away, which I'm guessing is going to be just about enough time to clean up the tremendous mess you've just made in your kitchen. Hey now, look at that beautiful red color. and That is a product of the cure and the smoke working on these guys. Now I've smoked these for four hours and I'm ready to begin the cooking stage. So I'm going to bump the temperature of the smoker up to between 180 and 190 and cook these to an internal temperature of 155 degrees. They're currently at 128 and I'll set my thermometer to alert me when they hit 152 to give me a little heads up. And when they hit that 155 degrees I'll pull them and dunk them in an ice bath to stop the cooking. Okay, so a number of these are at the temp I want, 155 internal. A few of them have a little longer to go, but I want to get the ones that are ready out and into an ice bath to stop the cooking and preserve them just like they are right now. I definitely want, don't want this temp to go above 180 because that's going to be a major failure where the fat inside of here is going to melt and it'll run out and get in between the casing and the meat and just be a gritty oily mess. So I'm going to take these guys out and dump them right into this ice bath. Now I'll just give these a few minutes. Then I'll pull them out and hang them up to dry off again. Oh yeah! Well this looks and smells and feels perfect, but now let's see how we did. Ah yeah, have a look at that. Got nice looking grain, got some of those mustard seeds showing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's some great sausage. The salt and the smoke is right where I want it. It's got a good snappy skin and the spices work great with the venison. This is going to be great in all kinds of recipes, and of course it's great just like this. But let me go grill some up and we'll really see how we did. Woo! Check out that bite. Oh! 
And that right there is why we do it. It's why we put in the hours and the days and the weeks it can take to get out there and get something to bring home and fill your freezer. And it's why we do the homework and practice and we eat our failed batches of sausage alone and in secret because nothing tastes better than doing it yourself. Oh, well good luck with your hunting. I hope you bag a wall hanger and when you do, I hope you try this and I know you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching.